So to start with, I just want to show you how to actually download the image that you're going to need for your Raspberry Pi. So you go to the URL that is specified um, on the video here and also put it on the description of the video as well, this GitHub page. And if you look at the top, it uh, looks like a normal GitHub page with files. If you've ever used GitHub before, it's just like a software storage place, if you want to call it that. And we can scroll down and we can see information about the Raspberry Noah. And now there are different versions of this and different people have tweaked it and things like that. So there's a number of different versions you can actually get hold of. Now, the one I use um, personally myself is this VE3ELB one here near the middle of the screen. So it says VELB3 has been maintaining a pre-built image of Raspberry Noah version 2 over here. Setup instructions of the PDF are included. So what we do, we just click that. We'll do open in a new tab here. And this takes us to another website. Now this will look familiar because this is the same sort of desktop that you're going to see on the later parts of the video because this is the image that I'm actually using. So we just look at this and we scroll down here and there's a big click here to download button. Now you, you'll notice this takes us to Google Drive. So what we'll do is we'll just click this and it will open Google Drive. And there's a couple of files that you need to actually download from here. There's three main files. Um, the first file is the latest build of the Raspberry Noah. So the one you want to download on my, as I'm currently looking now, is the September 2023.zip. So we need to download that. So the way you do that, you just hover over the line and you click the little download button there to download that. And there's two PDF files you need to download as well. Um, there's this readme meteordemod.pdf file. There's that one you need to download and you click the little download uh, there next to it. And this readme Raspberry Noah version 2 PDF. Again, you click the little download button there and that will download. Now, uh, the actual September 2023 image that I'm, I'm going to download here, um, it's 5.74 gig, so it will take a considerable amount of time to download despite, depending on the speed of your actual internet connection. And once that's downloaded, it's just a zip file, so you just need to extract the zip file um, on your computer and within that we should have an iso so the only three like i say the only three files we need are the september one the meteor dmod pdf and the raspberry noah now the meteor dmod uh, pdf that's the one that deals with the meteor satellites and the configuration for that and the readme raspberry noah is the one that deals with how to set up the noah satellites and that's the first bit we're actually going to look at on the video so those are the files that you need to download and that's how you download the files. As I said, there are different images on this page here, so you could have a read through and choose a different image. But for the purpose of my demonstration video, the VE3 ELB one um, that I'm just highlighting there, that's the one that I'm actually going to be installing on this particular video. So for the next bit, looking at the manual here, the instructions, we can see that it says about Raspberry Pi Imager and Etcher software. Now, you can ignore the Raspberry Pi Imager. Um, for this example, I'm going to show you how to use Etcher, which is a piece of software called Bellina Etcher. It's free and it's available for Windows. So if you use Windows, this is ideal. Uh, the whole tutorial is based on doing it from a Windows PC. So what we're going to do is we're going to download that Etcher software so we'll just copy that link and we'll go to a web browser and we'll paste that link and we'll go to the Belina Etcher software site. So we can see here it's quite simple. It says download Etcher. So we click download Etcher and it takes us to a section here where we can download the relevant installer so we have got different installers so if you have got mac os or linux things like that there is separate installers there so the one i want is the x64 64-bit installer so simply we just click download and that will now start downloading the linear etcher and what this allows you to do this allows you to write 
the basically the software the Raspberry Pi image to the SD card so what you need to do is you need to put your SD card into your computer you can buy these little USB converters that will allow you to convert the SD card into basically a USB you plug the little SD card in there and this is how you burn the image onto the SD card with the Bellina Etcher software which I'm going to show you how to do so I've got the notes open here in the background and one of the first things I need to do now I've actually got the download of the file is open this Bellina Etcher software and I click on flash from file and I browse now for the actual image which is the ISO image so I've extracted it and got the ISO there so you select the ISO the relevant ISO file that's the one that I've got and click open and then it asks me to select my target now I've got the um, SD card plugged into a USB converter there and it's plugged into my PC so that's the one I want make sure that you've got the correct drive selected because it will wipe the drive so it's very important at this stage you, you make sure you've got the drive connected don't connect any other drives the ones that are hidden are hard drives you're looking for the USB one which is the one you just connected so select that and basically now that's all ready and we click flash to start now I'm going to sort of skip a bit of this process in a second it just brings a box up here I've got a black screen up because it brings a box up saying do you want to continue and it brings like a command shell which it doesn't show on the screen but click yes and it's done that now and it's uh, starting the process as you can see it says flashing and it gives you an estimated time of roughly how long it's going to take now for this 32 gig card on my PC it's going to take um, roughly just around 15 minutes in total to do what it will do first it will flash the image onto the card and then afterwards once it's finished flashing the image it's then actually going to verify the image and check it as well you can skip the verification bit it doesn't really matter too much but I'm gonna let it go through that so I've just got open in the background there the the instructions that you download as well from the official Raspberry Noah website and um, it gives you the link there for the etcher um, software as well I'll put that in the description below I'll also put the link for the um, the uh, actual Raspberry Pi software as well the Raspberry Noah software in there as well so I'm just going to um, let that carry on because we're sort of at 7% at the moment so I'm just going to skip all the way forwards now right so we're now on 95% complete flashing and it's almost finished now so we'll just let this get to the very end and we'll finish this off and this is the flash like I say this is the flashing bit of the flashing the image onto the card and it's going to do a little bit of a, a verification once this particular bit has actually finished so like I say this is a 32 gig card I've got so um, ruffle time is 15 minutes for this bit first bit dependent on the speed of your PC and things like that as well and we're nearly done now it's at 99% complete so I'll just show you what happens next. And there we go. We've just started the validation pro process. Again, this can take a little bit of time as well. So we will leave it going along the validation. You can press skip if you don't want to do this, but I'm just going to let it uh, go all the way to the end. And I'll skip this bit on the video because we don't want to sit and watch it. So there we are we're nearly at the end process now for the uh, validating 97 percent complete so you just got to wait for this bit to actually finish off and then once it's finished we can take the memory card out of the pc and basically put it in the raspberry pi once that bit's finished off there you go 
we don't need we just ignore that now because it's actually finished and completed so we can take the card out and now put the card the sd card into the raspberry pi right so what i've done now is i've uh, put the memory card back into the raspberry pi and just connected it to a pc monitor just so i just need to find out the ip address and it will boot up and it will show me the ip address so i just wanted to show you this bit you can do this bit by actually just finding the device on your router or something but i just wanted to show you this bit um, before we jump forward because i need to know the ip address of the device so it'll just start to boot up on its own. You can't really see much at the minute because it's, uh, it's just actually starting up. So there we go. We've got the little mouse cursor and then we've got the Raspberry Noah logo there. And that's it. It's booted up now. So I need to know the IP address of this particular device on the network. So if we look in the bottom right hand corner, you can see network there. And it's given me the IP address of the device. So now I know the IP of the device on the network and I can basically look at it there just pointing at it there and go that's the IP address that's the device that I need to connect to like I say you could do that bit from your router end you don't have to do it by plugging a monitor into the Pi it's just that uh, for some people they might not know how to look it up on the router so physically you know seeing it on the screen this is what it's going to look like you don't need a monitor plugged into all the, it all the time because we can connect to it with either uh, vnc or team viewer so we can remote to the raspberry pi using one of those two options plus we can also ssh to it as well which will give us a command prompt and we can also use scp to copy the files off that's the way i do it for copying the files off which is a bit like an ftp try type software where we can just uh, go in and view the file structure and copy all the relevant files off that we need once uh, we've got the images on there you can get really complicated and write scripts to copy the files and things like that but yeah you're going uh, beyond the very basics but yeah that's the screen what it looks like um, because it's all pre-installed it's all pre-configured you have to do a certain amount of configuration yourself and that's the the point of this video basically because we need to go in there and do a bit more configuration to get things going so what i'm doing here is i'm just looking at team viewer because i don't need it so i'm going to disable it the only downside to doing this is because it's going to restart uh, um, back up again anyway so it's pretty pointless me doing that because i will have to go in and properly disable team viewer and turn it off um the other option you've got down there in the bottom right hand corner of the screen you've got an upward and down arrow if you press that you can um, enter your wi-fi credentials in at this point and uh, go in there and select your wi-fi and um, what i'm doing here is i'm just looking at uh, the vnc settings on the screen while i was setting something uh, just checking in all the settings and things like that but uh, i've got a k you can have a cable plugged into it or you can have it on wi-fi if you plug a cable in it's straight in there if you want to select wi-fi you need to use the up and down little arrow in the bottom right hand corner and just put your wi-fi code in the same as you would on a pc or any other device so now basically now i know the ip address um i can turn the device off i can plug it in somewhere else in the house or whatever i'm doing with it and i can just connect it with um vnc which is what i'm going to use to remotely connect to it and see exactly the same what i was seeing on the screen there okay so now i have real vnc open i'm going to make a connection to the ip address and it's going to bring me a box up for username and password the default username is pi pi and the default password is raspberry all in lowercase and that's now logged me in to the raspberry noah session there so we're now in a remote session on the raspberry pi and we can see all useful information on the desktop there the hard drive cpu information etc so we're going to open a terminal prompt and go back to the actual uh, manual there we go so we've got the manual open there and we follow the steps in 
order of what it's telling us to do. So step one is open the terminal and type the following command. So that's sudo raspberry-config command. Then we've got to select option six after. So let's do that. If I can type it correctly. And we do option six, advanced options. Press enter on that. Brings us another menu up. And we want to do expand file system. Which is the top option, so we do that. That was very quick. Couple of seconds, done. Okay. I can now come out of that. And it does say that we need to reboot. So what we'll do here, click finish. Would you like to reboot now? Yes. We'll click yes. And we'll just wait a few moments for this to now actually reboot and reconnect us again. So it's now just in the process of reconnecting the session. Just checking the manual what we need to do next. There we go, it's uh, signing us back in again now. And we're back in on the desktop again now. Okay, so back to the manual just to check what we've got to do now for step two is open the terminal and type the following commands to perform an update. So it's sudo apt update and then the two and symbol sudo apt upgrade. So what that's going to do, it's going to update and then upgrade all in one command line. So this can take a period of time to complete. So what I will do now is I will sort of just cut the video at this point and jump back when we get to a point where we actually need to input something but yeah that's just going to go through a process and upgrade there it's just going to ask us do you want to continue click yes and there we go we're going through the process now of upgrading and updating the system so that point has now finished with 99 percent that's just about to finish now And the update and upgrade will be complete. There we go, we're back to the command prompt now, so that means it's complete. So we can now move on to step three, which is to do with setting the time zones. So we go to preferences. So we cut the Lasby icon, we go to Preferences, and Raspberry Pi Configuration, and then once this opens, we need to go to the Localization tab. So we get Localization, and you set this now dependent on your location. I'm in the United Kingdom, so I'm going to change this from US to GB United Kingdom for the locale. Click OK. And same for the time zone. I'm going to check, check and set the time zone. You need to make a note of this bit, by the way, time zone. So just make a note of the time, what your time zone is set at. So for me, it's going to be GP, GB.
English UK there for the keyboard. And I'm going to set the Wi-Fi country anyway. You don't really need to do this bit, but I'm going to set it anyway. To match where I am. So I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top of the list. For myself anyway. I want GB Britain UK, so that's that OK. And then we click OK, one final OK there as well. And it's going to ask us again that we need to reboot. So we'll click Yes. And the Raspberry Pi will now reboot again. So we'll uh, just skip this bit on the video and we'll skip forward to when it comes back up again in a few minutes. So the Raspberry Pi has signed me back in again now. It's just signing back in. There we go. It's all back up. The desktop's loaded again. So we can continue now. And we're on now step four in the manual. So we need to go to that folder location. So we can just click documents on the desktop and do it this way. It's a bit like Windows really, just navigating to the location. That it's telling you home pi as we know a version two and then the config folder so there we go the raspberry now two and then the config folder and you're looking for a file there called settings.yml so we need to edit this file so we'll open it with a text editor there and looking at this the first bit we've got to go and do is go to find out our latitude and longitude to enter in this file you can do this via google maps you don't have to put your direct house address in you can just put um, your city in here the geographic location of your city it's just to do with the satellite passes obviously the closer you put in there the better it's going to be but for the purpose of this experiment I'm just going to put a geographical location of a city just having a look at what else we need to do further down but the first bit yeah we need to do is get the um, latitude and longitude in there as you can see it's very near the top first couple of lines line five and six in my config file might be slightly different in yours depending on the version but we just need to edit that line to latitude and longitude and put our correct coordinates in there so just search google maps for your city as an example stoke on trent area for myself and you just click over it there and show you the latitude and longitude the more accurate you can um, put this the better so I'm just doing this for the purpose of this video as a geographical area but you can put your actual you know you can go right down to the coordinates of where you actually are located so I'm just going to change that to what Google Maps says it is and now I'm going to change the longitude as well Um, the rest there we keep as it is so we're just going down and just checking the time offset I don't think we need to change that so what we actually need to do here is change the gain so I'm going to do the gain first set it at 44.5 the test gain there it says set to 44.5 the radio is correct for myself because it is an LTL dongle so I don't need to touch any of that uh, the next bit here is to change is to set the gain on all the relevant satellites so we need to change the gain on all these satellites to 44.5 so i'm going to change the gain here to 44.5 for all these listed satellites We 
we don't need to change any other settings at this point we just change the gain to 44.5 as per the manual so we now need to just set the ground station location and this is a free text box where you can put your call sign and your location this is just what appears on the image that you say so you could put anything in there i'm just putting staffordshire england and my call sign and the line below is for antenna information so you can put your antenna in there i've got a qfh so i'm just going to double check my locale here uh, my time zone sorry not my locale so it's europe london so i just need to remember that my time zone is set to europe and london because i need to set that in this file so if we go back to the file we scroll up to near the top and you can see time zone there it's currently set to america new york so we'll need to just change that time zone there to europe slash london for myself so that's now been changed and yet the manual says make sure you've got that correct so we can now save the file click save top right there and once it's saved the file we can exit that with the little cross in the top right we now need to open the command prompt again and go into the Raspberry NOAA directory and we need to run a command here to basically apply the changes the install and upgrade.sh which is a script file that will apply all the changes that I've just made to that particular configuration file and this will take may take a couple minutes to complete okay so a few minutes has gone by and the script has now completed and we are now back at the command prompt again so we can continue with the next part so i'm now opening a browser tab on my pc and browsing to the ip address of the Raspberry Pi and it should load up like this and this means we're working now we won't have any captures in there because we've got nothing connected to the device but that just shows that the Pi is working and we can see the up and coming so what I'm going to do now is run the final command which is the script schedule command which it says it wipes all existing and future scheduled captures so we'll just let that run now and that will wipe the captures and re-add the captures again which is going through the satellites at the moment so it's set for four satellites the four listed satellites And there we go that bit is now complete and it's just telling us again now uh, we're all done we can now reboot but just before we actually reboot i just want to show you this um, we click the little bluetooth symbol there we can turn off the bluetooth if you want uh, it will save a bit of resources on the raspberry pi it's a useful tip uh, click the up and down arrow there and you can actually connect to a wireless network so the up and down arrow there allows you to connect to a wireless network so in my case i now want to connect to my wi-fi network because i'm plugged in at the moment with a cable so i don't know if you'll do it this way you may do it a different way uh, to me but that's how i'm doing it i'm plugged in with a cable to begin with i'm now connecting to my wi-fi and there it will show you the tick that it's now connected to wi-fi so what i can actually do now is i can unplug it 
from the cable and you can see I've got a little Wi-Fi symbol there which indicates it's uh, connected okay with there and on the Wi-Fi and I'm working so I can unplug the cable and I can put this Raspberry Pi in my loft with the aerial out of the way and I don't need the network cable but you can run it on both the Raspberry Pi you can run it on the cable or you can run it on a wireless so I just thought I'd show you that little tip there on how to do that and how to turn the Bluetooth off we're now just going to shut down the Raspberry Pi and this is the same way you can reboot it you could type reboot in there but I've just typed shut down to shut it down because I'm going to pull the power out and, and move it from where it is at the moment and then I'm going to power it back on again so for this next part I've opened the Meteor PDF file which is the separate PDF file and there's a set of instructions in here not as many to do this time so we need to go back to the Raspberry Pi and look at the thing and it's telling us go to a particular folder path so we click on Pi click on that uh, Meteor Demon and then it's telling us to go in the resources folder and edit the settings.ini file and within the settings.ini file we've got the latitude and longitude which we need to change again and these need to be set to exactly the same as you set them in the previous file which was for NOAA satellites this is for the Meteor satellites so we set the same coordinates in here and we click save and then afterwards we will click exit just checking the file to see what we need to do there's not no other changes to that so we click the little uh, x in the top corner we have to open a command shell now trying to adjust the screen so we can actually uh, see what we're doing have a look what directory we're currently in we need to be in the Raspberry Noah directory we need to run a command now which is the uh, command listed in the document the update meteor command Again, it's an sh command, it's a script, we run that. And that should run as per shown on the screen here. It may take a few moments to run, so we will leave that running. So that script has now completed it has took a few minutes to complete i just skipped it on the video we need to run the next um, command which is the install and upgrade script command as per the document so we run this command and again this command may take a few minutes to run also so we shall leave this running and i'll cut this out of the video just saves a little bit of time so you don't have to watch it for a couple of minutes so there we go we're back at the command prompt the install and upgrade script is complete and we can now reboot the device so we just type reboot and the raspberry pi will now reboot and in theory now once we've done that we can actually start to receive some images because all the steps are complete we've done the first bit of the NOAA and we've done the second bit of the Meteor satellites so now what I've done is I've just opened the website to the actual NOAA capture software on my PC I've got the IP address in the browser and it's loaded up so we've got three options at the top I'll just show you how this works basically the first option at the top you see is passes and you've got captures and then you've got admin 
So passes, this shows the up and coming passes. These are the passes that are due to happen um, for the various satellites. So we can see them there, they're listed. And those are all the captures that we've got coming up for the various satellites. And you've got a nice map in there as well. So those are the passes coming up. Now the cap, the actual captures option are the images that have been saved. So these are the ones that you want to see, the ones that you're looking for, the captures. So as we look in here, we can see there we have got one failed image. Now it's normal to get a failed image every so often. You do do get a failed image. You might even get, you know, perfectly good images and then some distortion on some other images and things like that. So that is um, as you would expect. So first off, we'll just have a look at a NOAA 18 image here. It's got a little bit of distortion on it, but only a slight bit there. It's, something's happened there and it's slightly failed. But it, it is no doubt a good image. Now these are the uh, NOAA images, so that's that one. And we've got all the different options we can have a look at down there, different types of images and things like that. You'd read, nearly read, read into what all these are and how you can actually use them. But let's go back to the captures. Um, we'll have a look at a meteor image. So you've got the meteor images there and it should be quite a reasonably clear one, that one. It's a reasonably good image there. Quite happy with that image. Nice image of the UK there from the Meteor um, M23 satellite, we can see. So that's a nice nice image, that is. That's a good image. Um, and we go back into cap captures there. We, now, you notice we've got this we've got this one capture here that's failed, obviously, for some reason. It does happen. Um, so what we can actually do, we can go into the admin bit here. And once you're in admin, you can delete passes that are coming up. Or you can delete captures so if i go into captures there and you can see for example that meteor m23 image there that's failed i don't want to keep that so i can just click delete on that and confirm do you want to delete that yes and then if i go back into captures you can see that failed meteor image has been deleted now one thing i'm going to show you now um, is you may notice there's only a few images here. Now, the reason for that is by default, it will only save a certain amount of images. Uh, I'm not sure what it's set up by default. It's only like a day or two or something like that. Um, probably two days, I think, looking at these images. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and show you how to actually change that because, you know, I prefer to keep the images for something like 20 or 30 days and then copy them off the system. How you copy them off, I'll probably have to do another video for because to show you how to do that. But yeah, we don't want them to be kept for two days. We want the images to be kept for a little bit longer than two days. So now we'll just jump forward and I'll show you how you actually change that setting. So I've logged into the Raspberry NOAA version 2 here into the Pi. Now what we need to do is we need to go back into the settings file. So what I'm going to do is open documents there. And what we need to do is go into Raspberry NOAA version 2 there. We want that. And then we want config. And then we want this file here called settings.yml. Again, this is the settings file that we've played around with and edited during the early bit. We'll click text editor and this will open up. And now what you're actually looking for, um, I've just got to find it, is here. So we'll look for the delete older than number here so it says there in the comments delete older than n deletes all images older than this many days so basically i've got loads of space on my raspberry pi so i'm gonna set that at 30 because basically anything older than 30 days we can delete so i will click save i'll come out of that Close that down and we need to just open a uh, terminal window again now. And we need to make sure we're in the correct directory for this. So we need to change directory 
into the Raspberry Noah version 2 there and you can use the, the up and down arrow keys here that basically what I'm doing is the up and down arrow keys on the keyboard so we need to run this script here called install and upgrade again because we've made a change to the settings so what we do we run this script again now this will reapply the configuration again and it was basically now going to keep our images for 30 days as we specified it was set to two days but two days means you basically delete your images after two days which is not very good at all most people's raspberry pi has got enough space for you know 30 images or some maybe even more i have mine set to 30 um i've had it running for a period of months before i reinstalled it so yeah 30 is perfectly fine so that's how you do that we're connected on the pies it's running the script and now everything is going to be back to normal again it's going to keep all the images for 30 days okay everybody thanks for watching this video and if you want me to do any more videos on the raspberry noah software i believe there's a new release of it coming out so i don't know what the difference is going to be but please drop me any questions in the comments and i will try to help you with anything that you have i have had mine running for a period of time now for a number of months so i've sort of got my way around it and figured out how it works like i say there is different releases but this is the one I've uh, I've stuck with. Whether I'll change to another release in the future, I don't know. I'll have to see how it goes. But for now, this release is, is running fine. I'm happy with how it works. I'm going to do some separate videos for you on different things like changing the password because we've got the default password. I'll also do a separate video on how we copy the files off the system. So thanks for watching the video. Please uh, like my channel. Please subscribe as well. You'll get all the notifications about any up and coming videos that I may have coming up for you in the near future. I will put these other ones out. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye.